Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, family, and sci-fi film called Flubber. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A ringing alarm clock wakes up Professor Philip Brainerd. He tries to turn off the alarm but hits a button instead, and a trash bin launches into the sky and lands precisely by the curb. A machine prepares his breakfast, brewing coffee, cooking eggs, pancakes, and bacon all at the same time. A robot named Weber serves the plate of breakfast and greets Philip. Weibo accompanies Philip at the table. They talk about the news concerning the closure of the university he works in. Philip plans to save the school by inventing a new energy source. They go through his schedule for the day, and Weibo displays a wedding that Philip intends to go to but seems to have forgotten. Dr. Sarah Jean Reynolds fits her wedding dress while answering a call. She talks to her colleagues about how this time around, Philip can't miss the wedding. Philip enters an art class, not realizing that he's in the wrong room. He discusses Newton's law of gravitation, but he doesn't seem to notice the gravity of what's happening in front of him. They look at him judgingly, Philip is still oblivious and even finds a connection between the naked models and physics. He finally realizes when the blackboard reveals that this is another professor's class. Outside, Sarah calls Philip, admiring his goofiness. His awkwardness further shines as when Sarah's friend mentions the wedding, he replies by congratulating her. Sarah feels kind of annoyed that Philip doesn't remember. She reminds him that today is their wedding. She asks him to promise that he'll be there and says that this is her last try at marrying him. If he doesn't show up, it'll be apparent that Philip's incapable of loving something other than his books and gadgets. Philip works with a complex array of chemicals and lab equipment. Wilson enters the room and asks Philip what he's doing. Philip tries to act friendly, but the underlying conflict is evident in how they interact. Wilson talks about the news of the university closing. Philip asks him to leave, which prompts Wilson to ask about what happened to their friendship. Philip says that he grew tired of him stealing his ideas. Wilson rebuts that he wouldn't have been able to do anything with it because of how bad his memory is, calling him a genius in the lab but a moron in everything else. Wilson announces his plan to steal his fiance. Philip wishes him good luck and winks as he leaves a laughing Wilson. At home, Philip tries his shirt and vest on while chatting with Weibo. He catches a glimpse of his computer and sees an equation that causes a eureka moment. Philip finally discovers a breakthrough and immediately works on it. Weibo, feeling ecstatic, cancels the wedding for him. Philip goes down to his laboratory, and after a few adjustments and double-checking, drops a strand of his hair to act as an organic catalyst to the brewing chemicals in the container. They distance themselves from the contraption before activating it. He pushes down on the device, and after a moment, everything explodes. A stained Weibo laughs at the surprised Philip. He cleans up his glasses to see the mess he created. Sarah looks out the church's window with tears falling down her face. Wilson smiles as he realizes Philip himself is the one that sabotaged his wedding. The night comes, and Philip is frustrated with his failed project. As he climbs the steps, steam starts spewing out of the container. Philip turns back to take a closer look. He carefully opens it up, and Flubber, a green blob, jumps out. Philip tries to touch it using his bare hands, and the slime oddly communicates with him. He tries to figure out what Flubber is. It's malleable, able to shapeshift, and prone to tickles. Philip stretches Flubber like a child playing with a new toy. He drops Flubber, and it bounces. It separates into three, and Philip performs a circus act while Weibo watches in awe. She takes a picture of them, the camera flash aggravates Flubber. The slime bounces all over the place, but Philip dodges it. The slime travels through the basement doors and the two rush after it. They observe as it bounces around the neighborhood, leaving destruction on its path. Flubber enters a home and separates into countless pieces causing more mischief. They submerge into black ink and bounce all over the place, instantly painting a masterpiece. Flubber is an extremely smart entity that seems to be indestructible. With a baseball glove, Philip finally catches Flubber. Flubber overpowers Philip and knocks him out cold. Wilson leans on his car outside the church, waiting for Sarah to exit. She recognizes him, and they reconnect. He comforts her and offers to give her a ride home. Wearing a hazmat suit, Philip and his squad handle a radioactive isotope and place it in the lead containment unit. He carefully slides it under a container where Flubber rests. Philip explains to Weebo what he's doing, and all she can do is agree with every complex idea he throws her way. The experiment aims to control Flubber's erratic. A sudden alarm interrupts them, Philip finally remembers his wedding. Weibo tries to convince him that he can't leave as the experiment isn't finished yet. Philip says that he can't miss this, but Weibo explains that he's already a day late. Sarah's working in her office, and Philip enters the room. He tries to explain, but Sarah says there's no need for it. She gave him three chances, but with each one, he left her hanging at the altar. Philip shows her flubber, thinking that will make her forgive him. She ignores him, but Philip doesn't give up. He tries to show Sarah how flubber can save the university. Philip confidently says that he'll jump through the window and bounce back up with the help of flubber. As he readies himself, Flubber rips the back pocket, and he falls. Sarah doesn't care at all and breaks up with him. Philip's student, Bennett, comes home and rushes to his father, Chester Honecker. He says that he got kicked out of the basketball team and flunked chemistry. Chester asks his henchman how that happened. 
They said that his professor either forgot or didn't understand them when they talked to him. His father commands the henchman to find something that'll convince Philip to change his son's grade. The henchmen arrive at Philip's house. Meanwhile, Philip's busy performing another experiment. The henchmen observe him through a window. Philip applies a cream mixed with crystallized flubber material to the golf ball. He drops it, and the ball bounces around just as how flubber did before. It coincidentally hits one of the henchmen, leaving him disoriented. He repeats the process with a bowling ball. It goes flying once again, and hits the other henchmen. They lay there with red bumps on their head. Philip fills a spray bottle with the mixture and squirts some on the floor outside. The henchmen attempt to leave, making a run for it, but are surprised when the ground flings them up. In his garage, Philip makes some modifications to his automobile. He gets in the vehicle and takes his decked out car for a ride. He and Weibo float through the neighborhood, smoothly sailing while they jam out to the radio. After some twists, turns, and loops, they stop to admire the night sky. Philip turns off the ignition, and they start to fall. Philip then starts the car back up right on time. Philip hovers above Sarah's home to see her and Wilson drinking wine on the porch. As he's about to leave, Wilson leans in for a kiss. Sarah turns her cheek, and Philip sighs in relief. They plan to attend a basketball game between their two schools. Back at the mansion, the henchmen explain to Chester what happened. They say that Philip took his balls and rubbed some cream on them. Philip's balls bounce and hit their heads. Chester doesn't believe a word they're saying, so they reveal their injuries. Philip and Weibo return home. She tries to comfort him but he says that he wants to deal with it alone as this problem isn't something a robot can understand. After a while, Weibo is seen mixing and matching women's faces on the computer. She dresses the character up, names her Sylvia, and clicks on the create button. Weibo projects a hologram of Sylvia, and through her, Weibo tries to kiss Philip. He suddenly awakens, and Weibo rushes down to delete any trace of what she did. She feels embarrassed as she positions herself to look like she's been charging the entire time. Philip wakes her up and says that he just got an idea, he plans to bring Flubber to the basketball game. He brings a basketball with him along with a spray bottle filled with the flubber mixture. He sprays the ball and proceeds to do some tricks with it. Then, he does the same to the bottom of his shoes and weighs himself down with a sack of sand. Philip jumps and reaches the scoreboard. He practices and almost gets slammed by his anchor. With Weber and Weebos, Philip produces flubber tacks that'll help their basketball team win against their opponents. He hopes that this shows Sarah that flubber works. Philip is about to head out and reminds Weebo to take care of the house and not cause any commotion. She assures Philip that nothing will happen on her watch. However, as he drives off, she lets out a chuckle indicating that she's planning something. In the locker room, Philip applies the flubber tax onto the bottom of the shoes. The game starts, and they look like kids up going up against grown men. Back at the garage, Weibo opens up the containment unit of flubber, and it comes rushing out. At the basketball game, the opponent takes a commanding lead. Philip sits behind Sarah and Wilson. He cheers for the team and blows his air horn next to Wilson's ear. Chester, Bennett, and their henchmen sit courtside, watching the game. Philip rubs his hands with the flubber cream mixture. He puts his palms together, then accidentally hits two people behind him. The team heads out, Philip shakes their hands one by one, transferring the flubber powers to them all. The ball is inbounded up high and to everyone's surprise, a boy rises and snatches it. He passes it to his teammate, and he dribbles the ball at incredible speeds. Big Lawrence drives to the rim but falls as his defender gets on his way. As his butt touches the floor, he gets launched up and face plants on the backboard. The ball, however, circles the rim and falls in. Everyone is in shock as the entire team leaps through the court and scores again. The boy shoots the ball on the free throw line, it ends up bouncing back and forth both rings, eventually going through the hoop. An overjoyed Philip celebrates by hitting Wilson's head. The game proceeds, and Philip's school's team is near winning. A player sitting on the bench notices the tack on the shoes. He takes them off, which alarms Philip. He rushes to the team before the kid removes any more of it. Philip gives him a pep talk and cleans the bottom of his shoes. He throws the towel, and it conveniently lands on Wilson's face. Philip tells him that no matter what, he has to jump or else he'll fail him in his class. The clock runs down, and an opponent shoots an open jumper. The boy jumps and grabs the basketball. He somersaults his way to the other side of the court, scoring the buzzer beater. The game ends with Philip's school winning. The crowd celebrates, and Sarah leans in for a hug with Philip, but Wilson interrupts them. Chester deduces that Philip has something to do with what happened, and his henchmen support his theory. Sarah and Wilson leave to continue their date. Philip barges in and asks to talk to Sarah alone, but Wilson refuses. An enthusiastic Philip admits to Sarah that it was Flubber that won them the game. He thinks that this will win her over, but she just acknowledges him, showing no feelings at all. On his way home, Chester sees Philip's flying car, a sad Philip enters his home. He opens up to Weibo about how much he regrets not caring more about his relationship with Sarah. Philip attributes his absent-mindedness to the fact that Sarah takes up every space in his brain and his heart. Feeling hopeless, he accepts that he has lost Sarah. Weibo tells him not to give up, but Philip thinks that this is the best for Sarah, saying she deserves someone better. Weibo reflects and gathers the strength to bring Philip and Sarah back together. She arrives at Sarah's home and tries to enter through the window. 
Sarah notices her outside and invites her to come in. Weibo shows Sarah a recording of their conversation earlier. Her eyes sparkle when he hears how much Philip loves her. Sarah appears in Philip's room, and they kiss passionately. A fulfilled Weibo gives them privacy. The two ride the flying car and talk about how Flubber can help save the university. Philip suggests that they produce shoes, but Sarah says it's the flying cars that will fetch them a fortune. They return to the garage, and Chester and his goons greet them. He opens up the hood and sees the mechanism behind the flying car. Chester offers them a deal, but Philip asserts that they have no intention of selling him the car. They give up a chance for the university's debt to be forgiven, and Chester leaves with nothing in his hands. The car flies through the fields and arrives at the Ford headquarters. A receptionist enters a man's room and asks if he's interested in seeing Philip's car design. He refuses to meet but then hears a honk from outside his office. Philip and Sarah greet him and shows him a for sale sign. Chester's henchmen break into Philip's home. Weibo finds them looking for something in the basement, destroying equipment in the process. One of the henchmen sees Flubber. Weibo comes rushing in, knocking one of the henchmen out. She then hides and carefully calculates her attacks. The other henchman makes a run for it, but Weibo hunts him down with ease. She sees the other standing and rushes towards him, only to be met by a baseball bat, knocking her out. The henchmen then take Flubber. Philip and Sarah return to Philip's ransacked home. Philip tries to call Weibo, but she doesn't answer. He notices that Flubber's gone and finds Weibo. His eyes tear up as he tries to talk to her. Weibo can't speak, but she signals that she knows they're there. Philip holds her in his hands and assures her that she'll be alright. Philip says that he just needs to make repairs, and she'll be back to normal. However, deep down, he knows the damage is too severe, and his words only act as a means to comfort her. Weibo turns off, and Philip bids farewell to his creation and best friend. On his porch, he asks Sarah what happens to the soul of a machine. She replies by asking if he can fix her. Philip says that he can make repairs, but he can never bring back the Weibo they know and love. He says that Weibo was special, she's the only one of his creations with a personality. Sarah realizes something, she asks if Philip remembers the word that flashed on Weibo's screen just as she turns off. He recalled that the work begins with the letter S there, on the computer, they watch Weibo in the form of Sylvia saying a message she left for them. Weibo says that on the computer is a file of her complete design. She blows Philip a kiss, saying that she hopes that he can love her daughter just as much as she loved him. The two fly off to Chester's mansion for a meeting. Philip agrees to sell him Flubber. However, Chester clarifies that there isn't any reason to buy something already in his possession. Philip tries to say that he's the only one who knows how to use Flubber, but Chester replies that he already has someone working on that. Underneath the chairs, Philip and Sarah's shoes have Flubber tacks. Chester makes a counteroffer, he proposes that he'll accept Philip's deal, but everything Philip invents will belong to him for the next two years. Philip agrees. They make their way to Flubber while the car engine starts. The flying vehicle floats above them and parks itself adjacent to the room. What meets the two is Wilson. Like a vulture, he sits idle, always ready to sweep in and take advantage of Philip's innovations. Philip shows them the flubber cream mixture. He and Sarah rub some on their hands, saying they need it to handle flubber. Philip reaches for something in his pocket, and the henchman stops him and grabs it for him. It's a squirt gun that Philip intends to use to lower the container's temperature. Chester instructs his henchman to give it to him, he misinterprets it and starts squirting liquid into Philip's face. Chester reiterates and says to give the squirt gun to Philip's hand, the simple-minded henchman shoots Philip's hand. Philip stands there all wet and can't help but smile. The henchman finally realizes and hands him the squirt gun. He opens the container and talks to Flubber. The car outside readies its light and points it toward the room. Flubber becomes restless, and Chester commands his goons to get Philip. He jumps to get out of the way, and the two knock each other out. Wilson grabs hold of Sarah's arm, but she punches him repeatedly, knocking him out. They play around with the goons before eventually catching Flubber, which Sarah then throws at Chester. Flubber ricochets into Wilson's mouth, and he starts moving funnily as Flubber bounces inside him. Flubber exits through his behind, and Wilson passes out. The next day, the newspaper front page features Philip saving the university. At the chapel, Philip and Sarah are finally getting married. The priest pronounces them husband and wife, and Philip kisses the bride through a video call with Weebet's help. They then ride the flying car to the reception. 